good evening, everybody. We have a consecutive integer summation result here, and we're going to stick to n just being natural numbers uh, greater than or equal to 2. It probably is trivially true for n equals 1, but we'll stick to 2, 3, uh, 4, and so on. Okay. And I remember in middle school liking numbers but never noticing this was true. Now, this is supposed to convey that the integers are consecutive integers. You can see that the, the integer before plus 1 is equal to the, the next integer. So this is supposed to convey consecutive integers. Now, uh, the thing that makes this fly, in my opinion, is just to note that uh, 5 times 5 to the n raised to, or 5 to the n minus 1, excuse me, okay, is trivially equal to 5 to the n, right? So that's, that's really the insight here that I never really thought about much, you know, when I looked at this problem. I had to think about it for longer than I want to admit. But anyway, this truth leads one to consider this sum, okay? Because notice here that we have five copies, one, two, three, four, five of them. Well, that's equal to five times five to the n minus one, which is five to the n, okay? So this definitely equals to, um, let me just write this out. Um, this would be equal to um, five to the n. And I'll go ahead for emphasis and put a plus zero here, folks. You see how this is set up? in a symmetrical sort of fashion. We have five to the n minus one here, minus two, minus one, nothing deducted from it here, and then plus one and two. So you see these constants you see, minus two cancels with this plus two, this one, minus one cancels with this one. And so I wrote the zero there for emphasis. And again, the five to the n is because of this truth right up here, uh, that five copies of 5 to the n minus 1 is 5 to the n, okay? So that's definitely equal to 5 to the n, and so we've, uh, we've proved it. You know, that proves the result. Uh, we, we have, we've constructed five numbers such that when you sum them, you equal to 5 to the n. So you can, uh, you can go ahead and say equals to 5 to the n right here, and, uh, and then that's, that's, I guess that's QED time, right? Now, I did work a concrete example so this wouldn't feel so hollow. Um, all right, um, let's go down and take a look at the instance where uh, n is equal to 3. Okay, so we'll write down n equals 3 here. Okay, so again, you can see right here, 3 minus 1 is 2, 3 minus 1 is 2 all the way across, right? So let's just go ahead and do the hand calculation here. This is 25 minus 2, which is what, 23? This will be plus 24. See, consecutive numbers. Plus 25. Uh, plus 26. And finally, we get plus 27. And you guys, it's very easy to verify that that does equal to 125. that that is certainly equal to 5 cubed. So I know this works well for odd bases like 5, 7, 11, and so on. I'm not quite so sure about it. I think there's a comparable result. Uh, but you see how this matches up right here? Okay, so anyway, the concrete example, and I think it works for even bases also, definitely works for odd bases and for any, for any natural number in. Okay, hope you enjoyed.